What's going on everyone? D Anthony here with evolutiontraders.com. If you guys haven't came to my channel before, thank you for visiting. I hope you guys uh, stick around, subscribe, join my Discord. That link is down in the description box below. But let's just kind of get into the video. So today I was able to scalp options on AMD. Um, I did take calls and I was able to make $850 relatively pretty quick. Um, considering you know how long it would take you even if you were making let's say 20 25 dollars an hour at a normal uh, nine to five job how many hours would it take you to make uh, 850 dollars so considering that i was in this trade less than two hours less than an hour and a half really um, i think that's you know a pretty good day's worth of work so with that being said strategy that i use very very simple i talk about it all the time if you guys are here in the discord um or if you guys have been watching my YouTube channel, and also if you guys are in that Discord, guys, I'm throwing out these levels every single day as I'm seeing the plays set up and kind of form. You know, I'm alerting the Discord, letting the guys know, hey, we have a possible five minute scalp here on AMD. Hey, there's a possible one hour break. Hey, there's a possible flush. You know, so if you're interested in that kind of content, uh, definitely join the Discord so you guys can stay in tune with me and kind of trade live with me each and every single day. But if we just kind of get into my trade here, I'm just going to show you guys very, very simple what I was waiting for. So if you guys have been following me for a while, you know, I don't really like to trade the first 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of the market open. Um, I kind of like to let the market digest. I like to let it move up, move down, kind of put in, a, a you know, a daily little range there and see <clears throat> what kind of levels we have to work with. A little bit of consolidation, this, this that and the other. Um, with that being said here, we can take a look here at 6.45 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so 15 minutes of the market passed. We had this little bit of run-up from the pre-market, so we started to inch a little bit higher, and then we had a little bit of a run-up, and then we got met with rejection, a nice harsh little selling here um, back under the 20 SMA on the five-minute time frame, and then really didn't do anything, kind of just stalled out before we started to reverse. So this is actually where I started to look and get interested on the play. It was the 6.45 a.m. candle. After we, you know, kind of did this initial flush, but one thing that I was looking at was we really didn't take out any of this pre-market action, okay? So normally if I'm looking to take something to the short side, I wanted to at least, you know, at least test the pre-market lows, or at least, you know, come down and break those levels and then kind of give me some further confirmation. But being that we did, you know, just a little pullback here, nothing to be too concerned about. I know sometimes a lot of you guys, you know, when the market opens, you guys see a big move and then you see some selling and you guys start to get panicked, right? You know, just kind of know your levels, what you're actually looking for. Pre-market lows is down here. So as long as we're holding those pre-market lows, I'm still looking for the long-sided play. With that being said, I did notice that the future started to move in our favor on the NASDAQ 100. So as we closed over this 20 SMA here, uh, and got this five minute close. What I was looking for here was a confirmation of this price high on the wick, which is about 120.50, you know? So that, that's kind of what I was looking at was at 120.50, 120.60, you know, kind of sat back and told myself, you know, if, if we can get this next candle to open up, maybe take a little bit of a dip and then kind of confirm that candle close back over that 20, I, I'm, I'd be interested in getting long here. And as long as we continue to stay and trade over the 20 period moving average, which is a 20 SMA, I'm gonna continue to hold this trade. So like I kind of told people in the Discord, what I was looking for was, you know, maybe one, two, three points move. Um, 122 was gonna be the area where I kind of wanted to take some profits here, just considering that, you know, I did take 10 contracts of this, so it's not a lot. So I know a lot of times people think, oh, you know, you took 10 contracts, you got a lot of risk. It's like, you know, it's it was it's more than a thousand and less than three thousand dollars is what the contracts cost me, right? So I'll just let you do the math on that. Um, so it's it's really not that much risk if if you know where you're going to exit the trade. So, <clears throat> you know, I would never put on a trade, you know, let's say twenty five hundred dollars worth of options contracts and let that trade go against me and go down 60, 70%. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna do that because just because you have to understand the volatility in these options contracts, they could lose a lot of value extremely quick, especially if you hold them. So as we were holding this 20 period moving average, all I wanted to do was just stay over. So I got long here on the confirmation candle at 650, and then we made this nice push up all the way into 122.38. So it was right at this point in time we started to pull back, and now we're pulling back. Now we're pulling back. So I'm watching my PL go from green all the way back down to almost break even. And as we're coming down here to this 20, I said, man, I should have just taken profits here. But you know, I kind of had to stop myself. Sometimes, even myself, I got to remind myself follow the technicals. Is the chart giving you a reason to exit the trade? 
you know, of course you could have taken profits here, but like if you don't really let the trade develop and you don't really let the trade start working in your favor and respect your, your rules, then your results are never really gonna be consistent because sometimes you're gonna be selling out of profits too early, you know, you're gonna be selling losses too early and it, it, it's just gonna vary your, your results. So as we pulled back here into this 20 period moving average on the five minute time frame, I wanted to see it hold and I wanted to see a bounce. So the area that's why this is significant is because this is exactly where we broke out from and then we came right back down to back test it. So as we came down to back test this breakout and we started to bounce off, I knew that I was going to be in a winning trade, you know, and so all I was looking for here was to take out the highs of 122, what is this, 122.50, 122.60. As soon as we started to break through that 122.60, 122.50 area, I just immediately sold, right? I immediately sold those contracts. I was up about $1.50, $1.80, almost $2 on those contracts. And I, I was happy with the profits, right? $850 is not, is not a bad day's worth of work. So with that being said, I just kind of wanted to just lock in those gains. You know, had I had known that the stock was going to continue to run pretty much, you know, another hour uh, all the way up to 124.61, obviously, I definitely would have held that. But, you know, that's the thing when it comes to trading, you know, you never know where these things are going to stop. You never know, you know, how much profit they're going to give you and you never know how big that loss can be. So anytime you're happy with those profits, you know, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm a firm believer. You know, I, I hear a lot of people tell you, you know, you need to set a profit target of, you know, two to one or one to one or you know, 10% or 20% or, you know, this, that, and the other for me. And you can take it for what it's worth, but I know how much I'm willing to risk on the trade going in. And I know how much I'm going to be content with. If I'm happy with risking three, four, five hundred dollars $500 on this trade, and I can make four, five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred, a thousand dollars on this trade, I know that's well worth it for me. So for me, it's all kind of like a mental thing, right? It's it's a mental thing. So even though that risk to reward ratio is kind of like a one to one, a one point five, right? I know that you know if I'm if I'm willing to go down three, four, five hundred bucks, well, if, shit, if I can make four, five hundred bucks, I know I'm already good. And obviously that's a one to one. So anything I can get over that, I know that I'm pretty much happy with, and I'm just comfortable cutting that trade over my one to one. You know, so I just have like a mental stop loss, um, a mental. I mean, excuse me, not a mental stop loss, but a mental profit taking zone. My stop loss is always going to be. Um, any close over or under the 20 period moving average, just depending on the direction of my trade. So being that I was in calls here, if we would have closed under the 20, I'm going to take uh, my loss there, just like as if I was shorting and we close over the 20, I'm going to just cut my trade there. Um, but I mean, all my trades are pretty much the same meaning as far as profit taking, you know, if I'm taking five, 10 contracts, and if I'm in, in a play for, let's say 2000, 3000, $4,000 worth of options contracts, for me, a good winner is anywhere like between three, four, five, and a thousand dollars, right? I know that's a kind of a big range, but it, it all depends on the stock that you're playing. So being that I was playing AMD, an $850 winner on 10 contracts for me is more sufficient. But if I took, let's say, 10 contracts of Tesla, maybe $850, not so much. Maybe I'd be looking something for more of like 1500, 2000, 2500, right? So it just depends on the stock that you're playing. You kind of have to know the stock that you're playing. And for me, I kind of play the same handful of group uh, you know, each and every single day, and that's going to be NVIDIA, Tesla, AMD, Amazon. Um, sometimes I'll play Facebook, Apple's always in there, Microsoft. So predominantly those are the stocks that I'm playing. So I'm pretty comfortable taking profits where I know that I should be taking profits. And that just comes with a lot of experience and screen time. But if you guys are interested in trading with me each and every single day live, so you can kind of see this play out, see these levels, see the setup, see the strategy, definitely join my discord. That link is down in the description box below. Also, if you guys are looking to get a little bit more in-depth uh, training and learning and kind of understand the process of, you know, why stocks are stopping where they're stopping and where you should be buying, where you should be selling, where you should be maybe taking a loss or taking your profit, you know, kind of understanding what stocks are even worth trading before the trading session, uh, definitely go to my website, evolutiontraders.com, sign up, become a lifetime member. You're going to get access to two video courses along with uh, that access to that private Discord chat. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to see you guys all on the next trading video recap.